I have something very exciting today. This is the brand new Lenovo Legion 5 Pro for 2023. This just dropped, I think, a week ago on the Lenovo website, kind of just shadow dropped, and I picked it up right away, same day. So it just arrived actually yesterday. If you watch my channel, you know that I love the Lenovo Legion lineup, and I actually use a Lenovo Legion as my daily driver. It's actually just right off camera right here, the Lenovo Legion 7 right there. The higher power Dragon Range lineup is in some of the already existing laptops on the market, but this is the first one in the Lenovo Legion. And they've also upgraded to the new 4000 series NVIDIA GPUs. There's been a lot of hit and miss with those in terms of how the media is covering them, whether they're worth the upgrade or not. So I decided I wanted to pick this up right away. I went all the way up the stack, at least on this model, and I went with the 4070 in this laptop. So this one here is basically as kitted out as you can get from this laptop here. It has the RTX 4070. This one here runs at 140 watts. Last year, the 3070 ran at 150 watts. So there's a bit of a wattage difference there. Uh, we'll have to see how much of a performance that is in an increase or decrease. In terms of the processor, this has a Ryzen 7 7745HX processor in here, which again is the best that they offer in this specific lineup right here. I kitted it out with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, this one, this is new RAM for this year, so it runs faster. Uh, the RAM sticks themselves are 5600 megahertz. Uh, we'll see if it actually runs that fast or not, but it is an upgrade from last year's 4800 megahertz RAM. So I decided to go with the full kit and get 32 directly from Lenovo than trying to upgrade it myself. They do offer two screen variants as well. They offer a 300 nit screen, which does have good color accuracy, but the brightness might be an issue for you. I kitted mine out with the 500 nit screen on this here. So basically this is the best you can get when you configure it from Lenovo. I just went all the way up to stack and bought it. To be honest, the pricing is actually better than I expected. I've seen a lot of these 4,000 series laptops coming out this year and they're pretty expensive. This one is only 2,400 Canadian dollars on the Lenovo website, which is around 2,000 American dollars. I only paid 2,200 tax in because they had a really good coupon on this laptop right here. So I actually got it for a really good price for a brand new flagship that just launched with a 4070 in it and a brand new AMD processor. The price is actually fairly compelling for this. And some documentation, nothing special. The Legion 7 last year came with like some extra stuff, but just your standard documentation there, warranty, and the laptop. So there's two different models of power adapter you can get with this model. This one has a 300 watt. They also come with a 230 watt charger, which I suspect would be with the uh, 4060 or the 4050. Moved upstairs so I could get some better lighting. Let's have a look at the actual design. So this year it's a much darker metal here, so it's kind of like a gun metal. If you bring in my last year's model, you can see here it's a much lighter metal. So this is the Legion 7 here. Uh, AMD variant. So you can see it's a much, much darker metal there, um, which is nice. It's kind of like a gun metal, just a change. Uh, preference is up to you. Um, all metal lid as well. All metal back here. Bottom is plastic. So let's have a look at the bottom first. So on the bottom here, we have a really large vent here uh, to basically pull in air and get it out. These feet here are actually quite large. So we have feet here to raise it off the desk so you can get good airflow. These are pretty big, to be honest. Uh, probably about eight millimeters or so. I'm not sure what that is in inches, but eight millimeters. So it's quite a big lift there. We have our speakers here, one speaker there, one speaker there. So they're not quite down firing. They're kind of angled, um, should get okay sound. It does have a very premium feel to it. I, like I said, these are metal, very, very rigid design. When you pick up a Legion laptop, you don't feel any cheap wobble or anything like that. It's a super rigid design. And this feels the same as last year. And the same as the, the Legion 7, just a very premium laptop. It's not light. This is not a light laptop but it's also not super heavy. It has a lot of cooling inside of it, a lot of components, and it has a lot of metal involved with the build. So it's not gonna be a super light laptop. You're not gonna pick this up and take it around like it's you know, an ultra portable laptop. But in terms of gaming devices, it is relatively slim. It's nice and, nice and stealthy. So if you bring this to a business meeting, no one's gonna look at this and see like a huge game. It's not gonna scream gamer in a business meeting. It still has a sleek look to it. However, it is you know, a full board gaming laptop. Let's look at the port selection here. So we have a headphone microphone jack there. This is your camera privacy shutter here. So it's an e-shutter, you can turn it on and off and basically disable your webcam if you don't want people spying on you. I'm not sure how reliable they are, but they're there. USB 3.1, USB-A 3.1 there. Other side there, you get your first USB-C. This is a 10 gigabit, so it's not like a Gen 4 or anything like that, like you get on the Legion 7, uh, but it's a 10 gigabit, so it should be relatively fast. That's Gen 2 and another USB-A. So just two ports on this side here. And then on the back here, we have the RJ45 Ethernet port, which is pretty standard on a larger gaming laptop, so that's good. Uh, you get your first USB-C there. This one here, as you can see here, they're obviously labeled, which is really nice because when you're looking over the top of the laptop, you don't have to actually pick it up. You can look over the top and see. This is your first one that has power delivery, same location as last year on the Legion 7. 
So you can power a monitor off of that. You can put your power into this spot here as well and power your laptops. HDMI right there as well. And then you get three, and then you get two more USB-A types here. So this is just the standard USB-A. This is the always on port here. So you can you know, leave your laptop plugged in and have a device plugged in here. It'll charge it overnight, which you can configure in Lenovo Vantage here. Um, so that's basically a nice addition if you need to charge something overnight. And then you get your standard Lenovo charger that kind of looks like a USB style there, but that's the Lenovo charger. And here's our first look at the inside of it. Very, very sleek. In terms of the design language, it is an upgrade from last year. Last year, like I said, there was that big plastic butt on the back there. I didn't like that. It really kind of took away from the sleek professional look of the laptop. This takes a lot from the Legion 7, to be honest. It's still not the same as the Legion 7, but it takes a lot from it. This is my Legion 7. I just want to do a visual comparison. You can see there. This is last year's flagship AMD. And this is the Pro. And you can see it looks a lot, it looks somewhat similar. Obviously, there's some color differences in that. But this year, they redesigned the 5, obviously to better mimic the design principles of the 7, which I think looked really nice and a lot better than the 5 last year. And uh, these look, you know, somewhat similar, very sleek side by side, different, there's a little bit of a difference there, but they both look great actually. So in the front here, we have these smaller screws. And then in the back here, we have the longer, all these here are the longer screws. And then the front has those screws there. Yep, that's enough. So let's back it up here. Do this gently, because I don't know if the clips are located inside. Uh, definitely an easier unboxing than last year. Last year, the plastic piece came off with it, this kind of frame over here. And it, oh my God, it, I felt like I was always going to break it. So you can see here, um, you know, that's recessed. So it's not part of it over here, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, there's obviously where the RAM goes. Big vent here. Really, really nice big vent here. Um, you know, no obstructions. A ton of air is going to be able to come in there. Um, this is plastic, obviously, but um, last year it had those big plastic things on the side that I didn't like. This doesn't have that. And here's a look at the inside. So it, it looks actually a lot like last year's model. Um, so you have your heat pipes here, two big heat pipes into uh, this here, probably the GPU, two big heat pipes here, even larger, probably into the CPU, I'd guess, over here. Um, something under there, I'm not actually sure what's under there. You can see there you have your, um, some probably VRMs or something like that. I don't want to obviously take this off, but we can see those inside there, which is nice. Uh, they're getting, they're actually sharing the heat pipe here to get that out. Nice big battery here, 78 watt hours. Um, looks like it's pretty much as big as it can get. Um, the Legion 7, I think, comes with like a 99 watt hour but that's pretty big. You can see why the speakers are only okay. On a Legion 7, they have bigger speakers, larger uh, speakers. These are okay. There's nothing, you know, they're not problematic, but they're definitely not, you know, big honking speakers. They're just, they're okay. So to upgrade the RAM, you just pull this off. This is just like a little protective coating. You just slide that off of these little hinges here, and here's our RAM inside. So in terms of upgradability, obviously, first thing you're going to want to do is disconnect your battery. We have two storage slots here. The first one comes populated with a Micron SSD. We'll check out the speeds of that after. The second SSD slot is empty over here, so you can put in the SSD that you want in here. You can see here the Wi-Fi chip that comes with it. This is obviously upgradable as well. And we have two DDR5 sticks here that come with it. I opted to get 32 gigabytes, so 16 plus 16. However, you can buy this as a 16 gigabyte model, so it would be eight plus eight. However, this is the faster 5600 megahertz RAM that is a little bit harder to source. I haven't seen many sources of it online. So this is the RAM that it came with. So we get two sticks of DDR5 memory. So made in Korea, it's Samsung memory. It says Lenovo branded, but it's Samsung memory. DDR5, obviously, 16 gigabytes on each. You can get this with 16, but I have 32. Uh, and you can see there's 5,600 megahertz, which is nice. Last year I had, uh, I think it's 4,800. So that's a pr pretty big jump. The keyboard is the same exact. You get your number pad here on the left, which is really, really nice. Not a lot of separation between the number pad and the, you know, the enter key in that. I do find that sometimes I accidentally hit the num lock when I'm pressing backspace. Not always, when I get the hang of it. But you do have to shift your hand slightly to the side, otherwise you'll hit num lock quite a bit. Which, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you hit num lock. Here, and we'll do a little typing. I'm at a weird angle. Okay, so 
before I bring in the other laptop, I will talk about it. Uh, Legion laptops have incredible typing experiences. I've typed on all kinds of gaming laptops. I've typed on all types of productivity laptops. Legion laptops have the best gaming laptop typing experience that exists. I'm sorry, Asus, Dell, doesn't matter. Legion laptops have the best keyboards around for gaming laptops. There is a difference here between last year, and that is primarily the keycap texture. So to do that, I'm actually gonna bring in my other Legion because I do wanna do a comparison for this part because people have used previous year's Legions. Um, and this, so this is the Legion 7 here for 2022. And uh, let's just go back a little bit here. So we can actually look at the keyboard. I mean, you can probably see it. You know, they look visually different. It's not just color. This has a very plasticky um, keycap. It feels nice. They're a superb keyboard, but it's plasticky and you can hear it. This is almost rubberized. So this has, you know, like a rubbery, this has a plasticky type key feel and I'll type on it here. So this is something that I did not expect. I did not expect to prefer the Legion 5 keyboard. I had the Legion 5 2022 last year. Last year's keyboard was slightly below uh, the Legion 7, I would say. It had it was still an excellent keyboard, like a 9.9 .9 out of 10, whereas the Legion 7 was, I would say, probably the best I had typed on for the time. I actually prefer this year's keyboard. I'm very surprised with that. Um, the Legion 7 has a little bit of a metallic twang to it. Um, not much, but there's a little bit there. It's still a superb typing experience. Like, I mean, you're not really going to find that in any other laptop. Um, really, really nice. And I don't mind this, like, the smooth uh, texture to it. Um, it just allows your, your fingers to slide over a little bit easier, especially if you tend to have like, I don't know, moist hands or something. I don't really, but some people do. It slides over really, really nice and it doesn't pick up fingerprints. The Legion 5 over here does slightly pick up fingerprints a little bit more, but it has, I don't know how to describe it. It's not a rubberized texture, but it has a little bit more texture to the keycaps. Um, which actually feels really nice. And you can tell the difference between the keycaps and, you know, the surrounding body. It's very, very smooth on the Legion 7 here. You know, glass or whatever. This may not be glass. I don't think it is. But it's super smooth regardless. Um, so, I mean, you're not really going to use one or the other and say, well, this, you know, this is substantially worse. This is a really nice trackpad. We'll just listen to the click here. Legion 7 click. Now Legion 5. A little bit louder, a little bit deeper. Okay, so first things first, what I like to do is I like to come in here, look at bloat, AMD fine. Uh, this is whatever, this is all fine. Journal, that's a new one, I've never seen that. It's a Microsoft thing. Lenovo hotkeys, you can leave that. It's just a function thing. I don't think you need it to be honest, but you can leave it. Lenovo Vantage, we'll go over that. That's very important software. There are, al are alternatives to Lenovo Vantage, but we'll go over that. Voice. I mean, a lot of the stuff you could probably get rid of, to be honest. This stuff here, you don't need it. Uh, McAfee is always on Legion laptops. I consider it basically malware. I'm sure that McAfee provides some type of kickback for uh, Lenovo to have it on the laptop, which is fine. I mean, it lowers costs for the um, the buyer, so that's fine. But uh, remove it right away. Uh, let's see. One note, you know, you get the Microsoft Office. I'm going to remove that and put on my own version. That's fine, though. Um, this is some, you know, you can get rid of a lot of this stuff. Mixed reality portal, you don't need that. Uh, this is audio. You can, there's a lot of audio settings on this laptop, so you're going to want to leave that most likely. Um, again, it's NVIDIA, so you have all your NVIDIA driver stuff. Uh, you can get rid of this Toby stuff if you want, but you can leave it. It's not really blow, it's just there. Color Assist, X-Rite. Um, this one, if you get rid of it, you're going to want to make sure you, you know, get it off the Lenovo website. Helps with setting up, you know, like RGB patterns and that, so... Pretty clean. Primarily, you're going to want to get rid of McAfee. Lenovo Vantage is something you're going to use. You're going to fire it up here. It gives you all the information on your warranty. So if I come up here, I'm not going to go through all of this because it will give you my serial numbers and stuff. Upgraded as well. Um, so you can see here, and I just bought this. So it has basically 12 months warranty. Um, you know, you can get all your all your information there. You can upgrade it to the, like you know the more premium ones. But there are some other things you can do in here too. You can check out your current. Um, Performance there, GPU overclock, you know, this kind of stuff here, network boot. I turned this off, turn this off. It. Hybrid mode is something that you're going to probably want to play with a bit. When you're not using your integrated graphics, so, you know, your NVIDIA graphics, 
basically what it'll do, it'll work on the integrated graphics. So these AMD iGPUs have actually quite good integrated graphics, to be honest, really good integrated graphics. So you can just run off of the integrated iGPU when you're just doing day-to-day -day tasks or even light gaming. However, when you're on power, um, it will kick over to the dedicated graphics as well. So you'll end up having basically saving a lot of battery because when you're on hybrid mode, you're going to be basically disabling the dedicated graphics, which is good. There's other options in here as well. DGPU mode, so that'll actually disable the integrated graphics. Um, so if you're always going to be plugged in, that's great. You're going to have maximum performance. There is another useful thing if you come into power here. This is one that I find very useful and I do it all the time. There's rapid charge, which will charge your battery quicker. Conservation mode is another one that I use all the time here. So basically, if you have your computer plugged in all the time uh, to power, you're going to always have your battery filled to 100%. And technically, if you have your battery at 100% all the time, it does de increase wear a fair bit. Um, so if you're going to use it plugged in all the time, this will only charge it up to around 75 or 80%, and basically it'll stay there. And theoretically, a battery that is sitting at 75 or 80% for you know long term, if it's plugged in, is going to last longer. Okay, so the takeaway is, um, sounds great. Um, I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10, um, you know, but it's a very good sounding laptop, especially for a gaming laptop. It's just that I'm a little biased because the Legion 7 has really, really good speakers. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some kind of spoken uh, portions for the audio. I'm not gonna bring up like a Zoom call, so I'm just gonna link to my brother's video here, uh, Idiot Ben, um, best channel on YouTube. So I'm just gonna play his video and there's a speaking portion you can kind of hear. It's at, uh, I believe it's at 70 here. So we'll just play this here for audio and we'll see how it sounds. Before Frank gets the chance to help block the doors, this old lady lets all the zombies into the mall in an attempt to save her poodle who's stuck between the doors. So that's why stores never want you bringing your dog inside. It's in case of zombies. Yeah, let's, let's give Sonic a, a little bit of a break. You can only pick so many low-hanging fruit. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrap this. Here's the results of the drive test. She's using Crystal Dismark, just, you know, kind of a general baseline. So you can see there it's a Micron drive or Crucial. Uh, looks like it has pretty good speeds. So we can see there good reads, good writes, which is actually nice. So it's a higher end Gen 4 drive. Not sure if it has DRAM, I'll have to look it up, but it uh, looks like a pretty good drive to be honest. And here's a look at the battery life. Not going to be great on this laptop. Um, the 7745HX is, from what I've seen, very powerful the AMD this year. So it's a bit of a divergence from the normal AMD setup. You're not getting as much performance out of the CPU on the last gen, the 6000 series, but they don't perform as well. This 7745HX is extremely powerful in terms of the CPU. However, it does demand a lot more battery. So you can see there, um, you know, the battery life isn't great. Uh, if battery life is your primary concern, um, to be honest, the 2023 laptops are probably not the way to go because Intel and AMD are both gonna use a lot of battery. You may want to look back at the 2022 models for battery life, like the 6800H. That's a really good battery performer. So let's listen to how loud it is. I'm just installing Cyberpunk and a bunch of Xbox games, so the CPU is going pretty fast. It's actually not that noisy, just doing installations. Uh, the fans go pretty hectic on Legion laptops, but uh, they're not overly loud. And here's the Time Spy score. So you can see there, very good CPU score, um, up quite a bit from my 6800H. And the graphics score good, obviously. Um, yeah. Okay, so here we are in the first game test. This is Cyberpunk 2077. I have a uh, performance mode on. You can see by the angry red dot there. Um, and I have the dedicated graphics enabled, so we're not on hybrid mode. Uh, so we're gonna get our best performance here. And there we go. So we're basically at 1600p Ultra. Uh, I'm recording this externally because I want you to see what I see. Um, this isn't, you know, a benchmark video. You can benchmark any 4070. Um, this is an, a user experience video. So how does this game perform and how does it perform for the user and what does it look like when you're playing the game? How does it sound in the fan? Okay, so 1600p Ultra, no ray tracing, no DLSS. Um, so 1600p is basically 1440p or more equivalent. And... Uh, Good performance. 
look over here where it's a little bit more demanding, 70. Drop down to about 52 FPS. Lots of cars in that, we're at about 45 LSS. So that little baby DLSS brought us pretty close to 60. Static and we're moving around 50. So not, still not quite 60, but pretty close. And DLSS doesn't cause any issues here. If you look at my video at the uh, XESS on the Arc GPU here, on uh, this area, you can see that FSR has a bit of artifacting, whereas, uh, so this is balanced now instead of quality. And uh, you know, now we're up quite a bit. Now we're above 60. So uh, if you want 1600p ultra, um, looks like you're just gonna throw on balanced. Looks pretty good. Let's go ray tracing medium and we'll put DLSS, I wanna actually set it. So we'll set DLSS to balanced and we'll have ray tracing set to uh, medium. Turn this crap off. And let's see. So ray tracing medium with balanced X, with balanced FSR. And uh, we're, we're around 50 to 60. This is a demanding scene, right? So it's gonna, this will be one of the more taxing areas in the game. You know, if you go up here, for example, it'll drop, it'll jump up. Uh, so you can see the ray tracing in effect here, but we're up quite a bit here. 70 FPS. So yeah, definitely ray tracing viable. Um, you just want to make sure that you're turning on some XES. You just want to make sure you're turning on some DLSS. All right, so it looks like we're just squeezing in under the VRAM there. 7, 9, 7900 when we have 8 to work with. So I mean, we're just squeezing it under here. Uh, we're going up to eight. It might be okay. Usually the afterburner exaggerates a bit. Um, so it looks like we can do 1600p extreme. Oh, no, there's, uh, no, I don't see any visual hitching. So 1600p extreme presets with uh, better anti-aliasing, no DLSS, and we're doing well. We're Again, our VRAM is right up against the wall, eight gigabytes to work with. So we can't turn anything up above this, obviously because we'll just exceed VRAM and it'll start hitching, but this is good, this is really good. This is why, um, you know, I tested this game on the 4050, which has only six gigabytes, and we couldn't get settings like this um, because you know, it's only six gigabytes to work with.